Hello, Airbus Cockpit Coach here and welcome to the channel. In today's tutorial we're going to be looking at the balked landing. So what is a balked landing? Essentially the balked landing is a go around that is initiated during the landing from between the flare initiation stage until we apply thrust reversers if we're using them. So it's a very late stage uh, go around procedure essentially and it's usually as a result of improper landing technique by the pilot flying, such as a, a long touchdown, a bounce, rapid uh, vertical speed changes, normally due to shifting winds. From my real world experience, the, the last minute wind changes are the, the biggest cause of this. Sometimes there's literally not enough time to react and as a result, we will hit hard on the runway at times and the aircraft will bounce or it provides us with a bit of extra lift and we float and touch down a little bit too late. Now, it's quite normal, um, but we need to be able to react in the right way. But this is a procedure that is conducted by the pilot in command, um, so the captain of the aircraft, and it is something we're tested for in the simulators. And also in the real world, I have a line training capacity, so I do spend some extra time in the simulator covering this because the likelihood of a port landing increases we have the newly qualified pilots visiting new aerodromes for the first time. So I have had to conduct this procedure on a number of occasions at various airports around Europe, uh, including my home base, and at times for my own landings. Um, so it is quite normal, but it's important that we, uh, we know how to react. So as mentioned, it's always conducted by the pilot in command. So the pilot in command will need to take control of the aircraft. So the first thing we'll do is announce, the captain will announce that I have control. That's really important. And at the same time, we will hold the uh, autopilot disconnect button for three seconds. And that uh, is the takeover. Uh, it puts control over to the captain's side. So if I show you that now, I'm gonna push this for three seconds and you'll see on the first officer side that the, uh, the red arrow will come up indicating that control has been taken over and the captain has priority over the controls. There we go, red arrow has come up and there was an oral voice saying priority left as well. So that's what you will see in that situation. Let's get the autopilot back in while I talk. The next thing we'll do is announce, the commander will announce TOGA. So that's confirmation to the pilot monitoring that the commander is initiating the balk landing procedure and we would then advance the thrust levers to the toga gate, which is the, the last one there at the end. The engines will obviously spool up, takes a little bit of time, and then we will adjust our pitch. Now we need to adjust pitch in order to climb away from the ground, but we don't want to adjust pitch in a way that's going to risk a tail strike. So that's a common error with this procedure is that pilots pull back a little bit too quickly, close to the ground at low speed uh, and a tail strike can result. So that's the real gotcha with this uh, situation. And uh, bear in mind, you may be flying an A321, which is a little bit longer. So think about your aircraft type as well. So it may be necessary in this situation to initially pitch down. Don't forget that when you apply toga thrust and that power comes in, after a few seconds, the, net, the aircraft will have a natural pitch up effect due to the increased speed. So once we've adjusted the pitch, we've got toga thrust set, uh, we will then announce go around. And it's the same standard go around procedure. And the commander will call go around flaps retract the uh, first stage of flaps back in and we initiate the, the standard go around. So this is all about control priority and minimizing the risk of a tail strike. If you do bounce the aircraft it's really important not to attempt to soften a second touchdown by increasing pitch attitude of the aircraft. So again you know you bounce you think you're going to come back in hard the natural tendency is to, to pitch up, to try and soften that, 
that makes that situation worse. So do not hitch up in that uh, in that scenario. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, turn us in for an approach uh, final to runway 25 here at uh, Luton, where we are downwind, and uh, I'll do what I'm quite good at in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and, and that's bouncing the uh, the aircraft on landing. So uh, I can assure you I don't do it as much in the real world as I do in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Lockstar. So it's coming down, lock. Runway's in sight now, 12 o'clock, and flaps two, speed checks, flaps two. Close slope start. So don't forget, uh, with this procedure, if reverse thrust is selected, you must come to a full stop landing. Uh, there's no going around once uh, reverse thrust is selected. Also be aware that uh, if we do land the aircraft and we're on the runway in uh, full configuration and we apply to a thrust for uh, the board landing procedure, the go around, you will get the uh, configs flap not in takeoff Config ECAM alert, and that will be triggered. Uh, that's normal. Play slope. So we're established. I can go gear down. We got our lights on. Oh, and spoilers. And flaps free, speed checks, flaps free. So the go around is standard. Most important thing is to uh, not bust your flat limited speed on the go around with toga thrust selected. Uh, they will soon come up, so uh, keep continuing to uh, get those flaps retracted on the on the go around as well. And flaps full speed checks. Flaps full. Wind's 24 knots, just right of uh, left of nose, so we have the port side. I'm going to take the autopilot out now. Cast one, my control. We do have real turbulence on, realistic turbulence as well, so we will see the speed tape jumping around a bit today's conditions. I do find that's very nicely modelled. It's just pushing us into VLS there. So you may get the speed to speed warning, which uh, is an early warning for low energy, it requires pitch and thrust to be adjusted accordingly. Certainly a variable wind. Minimum. Continue.
I have control. Toga. Priority left. So I'm pitching down there a little bit. I'm not going straight up. Go around flaps. Mantoga SRS go around track. Positive climb. Gear up. Matching the flaps. On schedule. Flaps up. Neva climb. Speed up star, go around track. Auto thrust. So you'll notice there that you know, we it looked uncomfortable. I guess is uh, how you could, could describe that. The wheels, I'm sure, may have touched more than once there. That's quite normal, that procedure. We're not concerned about that. The key thing is that we don't risk the tail strike. The wheels are obviously designed to touch down on the runway. The key thing is to control the pitch, get the toga thrust in, and then pull away gradually. Now, a few people have asked, well, how do we get back to the runway after a uh, go-around situation? And uh, if we come down to uh, the McDo now, you'll see that uh, kind of cleared out, uh, constraints have been deleted. So normally what would happen in this situation, uh, air traffic control will uh, either, let's get the autopilot back in for a moment, so I'm flying, uh, talking to you, and we'll put a heading in. Normally air traffic control will give us another downwind leg and we simply go heading select and uh, we'll come back around downwind for another approach. They may give you a, uh, a fix to fly to first. So uh, the, the aerodrome is still in there. So in the flight plan page, we still have Luton in there and our approach because we've used Toga. The selection of Toga on, on touchdown there meant that the FMGC didn't dump our flight plan. So the runway's still in there. So we can at any time direct to any of the waypoints for the final approach, or we can enter another waypoint above that and go direct to that. So if we wanted to go direct to Foxtrot 25, we'd select that and go direct to insert. Also, we'd probably be reselecting the approach phase fairly early on here for coming back downwind. So it's just a case of reconfirming that back into the approach phase. And as soon as we select flaps one, as we are, I'll do now to show you, the speed will come back to uh, S speed. And we're set up for another approach. And we can uh, go in and intercept the ILS and uh, have another go at that one. So that's the bulk landing procedure. It's very quick. It's very important for the commander to uh, make it clear that they have control and get the toga thrust in. Control the pitch. Don't be too concerned about multiple touchdowns if that's happening as long as the toga thrust is going in uh, you will climb away if you have any questions on that procedure at all uh, please drop me into the comments and i'll be more than happy to ask answer those and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date uh, with more tutorials and full flight videos thanks very much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one take care